Welcome to the Coffee and Critique Podcast. So we are going to be going live soon. Uh, I'm going to have Alex Pascucci join the room. How's it going? She made it. She's the first one and she's a real one, everybody. How's it going? How's it going? Rolling in. How's it going? AJ, how's it going, man? So we're going to have an interview with the creative filmmaker, Alexandra Pascucci. I'm going to send her an invite. She's going to be joining in on the party. Do you think that do you think that maybe you want to be behind the camera or do you feel like <laughs> like is it a possibility um, that we could get you there or <laughs> I, you mean like just directing? Yeah. And not being in it. <sighs> I'm such a control freak with my character. <laughs> <laughs> um this one I want to be in, but I have I have plans for other films after where I don't want to be in. Okay. And I'd rather just focus on directing. Okay. So you have so when 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 are we going to see your uh directorial debut? Like when is that? You already saw it. <laughs> no, I mean not that it. one. I mean like like you not in the movie cuz that's going to be different. Um after this next one, I think I'll, I'll focus more on the directing side. Okay. Because I mean, for me, I feel like whenever I work with such a small crew, as you know, <laughs> that I feel like we just all end up collaborating. Yeah. You know, and um, I don't know. I kind of like that. Just yeah, it is. It is interesting to because I never really did like a film set until you brought me on, and then that's when we were like, I was like, so where's the rest of everybody else? <laughs> it's like, no, that's right. us. That's no, us. no, that's just like <laughs> makeup artist, set design, set design, fight choreography. Well, I mean, now it, I know I can do it all. Right, the so credits are the funniest. <laughs> It's just us, us. <laughs> <laughs> so when people ask you, like, what did you like do for the project? Is it hard to tell them that you did everything, or does it? Do you feel like, oh, let me just tell them I do directing, writing, and this, and not tell them the other things that I did for the film? Because some indie filmmakers um, think it's just like, oh, you know, I do this, and then that's it, and then I just hire right. everybody else and whatnot. You know, I'm I'm not gonna be doing all this, but you gotta wear a lot of hats in order to get the job done. Well, I obviously say I wrote and directed and I'm in it, obviously. But um, and then I'll say I produced it too. But then after that, I'm like, I'll just end it there. Cause I'm almost embarrassed that I did like we did everything, but I'm like, no, that's actually pretty cool. Like, yeah, not a lot of people can say but that. Like sometimes, but like sometimes you sound like, I don't know, like you're bragging. And it's like, no, we just didn't have anyone. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I usually just leave it on. You know, I wrote directed and I was in it. Yeah, that that's I I mean, what was because uh, I don't think some of the audience don't know, but like what kind of got you? Mm-hmm. What, what was your like if you were to create any other movie what would be the polar opposite of infliction like if you were to just like make a film a com- like a comedy everybody everybody tells me to do comedy even though we had our comedic <laughs> moments <laughs> little did everybody they know. <laughs> tells me to do comedy but i just feel like comedy is like a weak point for me right now and it's something i would have to work on okay. before i wrote one and i just love darker stuff <laughs> but um I'll ultimately expand. I mean infliction had point. its moments. <laughs> right? We had a little we comedic had, relief from there. Yeah, I'm, and it's even funnier, <laughs> especially if we, we you know filming it and you're like, oh no, that was straight comedy. I don't know how any of y'all kept a straight face. <laughs> if they only knew. <laughs> <laughs> we will release the bloopers pretty soon. Yeah, I, that's what I look <laughs> forward to. You have to watch the movie first, then we'll release the bloopers. Yeah, that 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 would be the bonus thing. Like like after you watch yeah. the film, there's gonna be like a link at the end. Is it just like click here <laughs> and it's gonna show you all the bloopers? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I'm thinking of him too already. <laughs> <laughs> so are you working any um new projects right now currently? Like um like in terms of writing wise? Since infliction right? is done. Um, I actually have some shorts written, but for that are like pretty much ready to go, you know, as long as we get like a casting crew. But right now, like my main project is the feature and like, I won't tell too much about it, but it's going to be about um, lobotomies in the 1930s. Oh, wow. <laughs> Straight to yeah. the dark. <laughs> no holding back. <laughs> yeah. So, But it's going to be, you know, a fictional story within what was going on in that time. Okay. Yeah. So what, what year, if we were to like kind of snowball it? I haven't given it an, an exact year yet because I'm, this particular project is taking a lot of research because I don't want to get facts wrong. And like I, I was a psychology major and I actually remember sitting in class learning about lobotomies and I said, I'm going to make this a movie one day. Oh wow! <laughs> so I finally decided. Yeah. So I finally, I always, you know, it always hits me at the strangest. <laughs> points in my life yeah like what i, like, I don't want to say what the infliction if you don't want to know but that was the funniest thing ever yeah i was writing infliction while i was doing x i was like well, well, working at, yeah in a preschool <laughs> <laughs> i had nothing to do with the preschool but you're bored while the kids are napping so you start writing a film listen so. you gotta do what you gotta do i was i was selling cameras and then i was working on my magazine and then thinking of the craziest shoots to do and that place I had mm-hmm. to leave because it was just stealing my money. It was just like, imagine just dropping, being a photographer in, in a camera store. It's like living in Candyland. So it was just like, oh, look at that. So I want quick, let me go buy that. It. Done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. But I know you also not only do, uh, you know, filmmaking, directing and writing, but you also model as well. Now, do you feel mm-hmm. like there is a decrease in getting paid, or are you on the FaceTime? Uh, the ba- not it's like a bandwagon, but it's like the FaceTime photo shoot kind of wave that's going on right now, like during what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, um, I'm not working at all, <laughs> so I have me neither. You're not the only one. <laughs> But, you know, that, you know what it is? That was actually a choice. And I see a lot of people still shooting. And that's really disappointing to me. Like, because, like shooting like, physically or shooting like virtually? I No, physically. Like actually meeting for shoots. And it's just really disappointing. Like that kind of stuff can wait. You know, like, what do you feel like is it is to get stuff. people to kind of keep going? Do you feel like it's one of the like, well, I guess because everybody else checked out, this is the perfect opportunity to kind of go in there and get, you know, do my, you know, shoot my shot. Do you think that's the case? I, I don't know. And I, I mean, right now it's pretty limited who will, because I know a lot of models who are very strong on, you know, staying home and not, being selfish like i would love the money right now trust me but you know priorities yeah (laughs) and um i think there's a limited amount of models who will still shoot during this time um and even a limited number of photographers and i don't know what their reason is um why it can't wait i mean I simply just walked outside my house and took some nice photos of the cherry blossoms and the trees. You can do that. (laughs) The people think like, I feel like people just as for like some photographers, like, damn, I don't got nobody to shoot. Like, Oh, there's nothing to shoot. I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? This You can make things work. Like you did virtual. And I see some other, I saw a couple other people doing that um, too. You can do, so that's an option. You can go shoot the birds. <laughs> yeah, if you depending on your lens, but still. Um, you know, the models were not going anywhere. So you let's just, you know, make it through this and we'll get back to what we were doing. Yeah. I would love the money right now, but um I just think it's pretty selfish to put my 
financial needs before like human lives. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it would be a dope but, shot. Like, I couldn't even imagine like people like, oh, we're gonna do like an I Am Legend shoot in New York and whatnot. Like, it's like it's the yeah. opportunity, just like, oh my god, and then it's just like, yeah, I can't, I just can't. Yeah, <laughs> I, just can't. I, I know. Can't do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, in terms of the psycho, the psychological effect, um, how how do you how do you feel like um people should kind of approach this situation especially as a creative like what do you think they should do to kind of keep creating content because it's kind of like overwhelming to to just stay put you know it is and especially you know people like us you know we we create like that's what we do for a job that's what we do because we love it um and it's tough mentally you know we've been home how long now and we can't really do anything. But for me, I found it being in quarantine is not that different from my regular life because I have no life and I don't go anywhere. <laughs> but, you know, being forced to stay home is something different. But like I have ended up finding all different things. To do. Like I said, I'm writing. I picked up, you know different hobbies i started working out like i do full week-long workouts so you know like they have a lot of- for your role <laughs> oh. <laughs> i'm working on it i yeah i start working out i do yoga um and like this is stuff i never have done before and you know it's just you, you got to make the best of the situation in my opinion um i'm baking a lot with my sister um you know i think there's I'm a plus knitting. side there's lots of plus sides <laughs> to this like people are like yo you you get to spend time with people and whatnot and 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 bond you don't have to worry about going mm-hmm. out as much and whatnot i feel like people are not seeing the blessing in disguise honestly like <laughs> right i mean you we really have no other choice we have to you know yeah and like we can either sit home and complain about it which is just going to be bad for us mentally or try and you know make the best of it so like right now i have my goals you know i want to finish my film so as soon as this is over i can do the things that you know i've been waiting to do yeah and um and I'm gonna leave, you know, like strong and muscles now when I leave. Listen, I no want to send you on. what I have so bad. It's so ridiculous that, like, it's not even the same movie anymore. Honestly, it's not even the same. Movie. All right, all right, Can, you have to send. I have to, to send. Me. Like, I'm like thirty pages in right now. It's just craziness because I'm building up a few characters, like the detective, mm-hmm. and they're. Like what I I'm not, I can't even ruin the plot because it's been like like slowly no, growing on me. Like I'll you tell you ruin. one scene. Um, mm-hmm. So pretty much, she had already left the room, and uh, like she already left, and it's like the next day, I believe. And then Dennis is he just he's about to you know he's still sleeping, and then he hears the door like opening. He's like, "Oh, uh, what's going on?" So then he wakes up, and then. You think it's Claire, but it's not. And it's actually his ex's friend who's picking up mm-hmm. her stuff. And he's like, What do you like? How did you get the keys? Like, she gave it to me because you're not picking up her phone, blah, blah. So then while they're talking, he's like, Oh, I'm looking for this. She he gets a, a text message from Claire. And he's like, Oh, I thought it was a dream. It's not a dream. <laughs> and she said, uh, your friend is taking a little too long. And he's like, You need to get rid of her before I do. And then he's like, all right. So then he's trying to rush her and then she's not really leaving. And out of nowhere, I don't know why I wrote this, but a red dot <laughs> showed up on on the girl's Wait, A red dot just showed up on this girl's <laughs> on this girl's chest. And you're like, no. <laughs> no. She has a sniper rifle. I'm done. <laughs> oh. I, I was writing my stuff at night, and let me tell you. You you are another character. <laughs> oh, I can't you're, wait. Yeah, you're another character. But it was it was fun writing that scene 
which I know is I know you probably were writing your scenes in affliction and be like, where where did this come from? <laughs> how did, right. How did this yeah. get out of my, my you, head? I don't I don't remember writing it. <laughs> <laughs> It was just there. Right? It's just like, how like, did this... it, You remember you, it originally started as a short. Yeah. And then when we did the full, I'm like, this is not the same and I'm movie. Like, Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to make her go back. <laughs> and uh, that just came out of nowhere. I think that was the best part was when you, because usually they have in the movies where they always go back. But I felt like, mm-hmm. like, she just literally went through this process and she's like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. I'm going back. <laughs> and she thought it was a well, good idea. If nobody, isn't that life? If nobody's going to do something for you, you got to do it yourself. That's it. That just represents life in general. Exactly. You just, just got to go back yourself. And I felt like that was that was like the 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 breaking point. Like, all right, now. But then she was like, all right, I'm not gonna go back like a punk. <laughs> no, no, you gotta be prepared. You gotta be prepared. So I feel like that was that was pretty pretty dope. But it's just interesting how when we when we create these ideas and we break the characters down. It's like, mm-hmm. I think the toughest part for me is breaking down the other characters around that strong character. Like, how do you how do you create ca- relevant characters in a story without it being like an ad, like just a random because most of these ex- these characters feel like an extra opposed to actual like antagonist to the story. Right. And I think that's really tricky to do. And I purposely didn't want to make useless characters like I wanted each character to serve multiple purposes. Um, and I just didn't want anyone thrown in there. And I just, aside from like a storyline, I just think from an actor's perspective, like you want to feel your character had some sort of significance, whether it's a larger character or, or a smaller character. So, but it's, it's tricky to do, especially when you have a film that's mainly just focused on one person. Now, based on that, because you said something really important, when you write, are you is it really important to add more emphasis on the dialogue or or do you find it also important to just emphasize the actual performance with less words? You know, I've been thinking about this a lot, (laughs) you know, writing that, you know, this next film. Look, I'm not the best writer. I didn't go to school for it. but like my main thing was I just wanted to tell a story and make it relatable. Um, I wanted conversations to just be like, if I was just talking to my, I base conversations off of how I talk to people, you know, um, as long as the story has been told, I think that's the most important thing. And that, as long as you can get something from it. Like, why I love George Lucas so much <laughs> as a <Absolute> writer. Absolute legend. <laughs> like, <it's> legend. <laughs> um, and he gets criticized so much for his writing. Like, it's called corny. And, like, a lot of mine is that as well. And, but, like, what he says all the time is, like, I just want to tell a story. And that's exactly how I feel. And if one person can take something away from one second of the film. That's really all I needed. Uh, like, like, was it pump the hips? <laughs> right. <laughs> now you never know when you'll need to do that. <laughs> exactly. I, I thought that was, the, you know. that was the best part of the premiere when that when it was like pump the hips. <laughs> and we're just like, out of all of that, <laughs> that's what you got. <laughs> But that's what it all came down to. Break the grip. Pump the hips. So you- Listen, we still got to make that t-shirt. Like, I don't care. <laughs> Merch. That's what's that's coming merch. <laughs> Infliction yeah. merch. Now, mm-hmm. when you write, do you see it in your head or do you write as you go along? Like, are you telling the story from like a visual in your head or is it like, all right, I'm going to just keep on writing and then eventually I'll just kind of... I can't just write. <laughs> it's just really hard for me to like force myself to write. Like it, I literally get visions that just come to me 
like throughout the day, no matter what I'm doing. And I'll like type it in my phone real quick so I can go back later and write it. But I've actually like being that I'm writing this new film now, I've actually gotten better at sitting down and just writing out scenes and thinking them more through. Um, Like I'll have the idea and then I'll just sit down to write it. And I've gotten a little bit better at that. Now, do you think it's possible to kind of uh, write? Like, it's a challenge, but is it, mm-hmm. do you believe it's possible to write out a, a, a feature film or a short in 48 hours? I mean, it's definitely possible, I think. I mean, you hear these stories of writers, songwriters all the time who are like, you know, writing songs in five minutes, writing films like in 48 hours um I probably couldn't um like I get in these modes where I'm like right 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 and then there will be like a month of nothing for me so I I mean I'm right like because like if I'm not inspired and if not I'm not um feeling it I'm just not gonna write bullshit (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> at least what i think it yeah sometimes so. i i have to take a break for a while because and what i used what I, I used to write like um like stories like novel stuff and whatnot but so i learned the technique and that was when i was like 16 and it was just all right if you're gonna leave it off i want you to do mm-hmm. something so dramatic that it forces you to come back to finish it so I would always end up either right. killing my character or something else happened, which is crazy. Yeah, I might erase yeah. it, but it always forces me to come back. And then sometimes it stays. Like I think you have to love what you're writing. Yeah. You have to, or it's just not worth it. Cause like even if nobody else does, you have to. Um and that will make you want to come back to it. Absolutely. And like right now, I'm like, I just want to shoot what I'm writing right now so bad <sighs> because like I can see like visually, like I can see it. And I'm just like, I just I need to get to that point. Is that so the, the one writing, that you told me about, which is yeah. the one on the stage? That's all I'm saying. But the one on the stage. No, that one's finished, though. What? So that one. <laughs> yeah, that one's. um, I think it's like. 30 pages did i send it to you yeah yeah yeah. i don't remember i got it okay that one's fin- that one's ready to go <laughs> like so that one's gonna be only that will be a short like 30 minutes so like you know maybe we can get to that when this is all over <laughs> i think it's gonna be a floodgate the moment they say uh yeah you guys could uh it was the coast is clear. We, I'm gonna give it like three we have months. So many, we have like <laughs> so many movies. Like we're ready to go. <laughs> I'm just so ready. Like, we're gonna like knock them out. Like <laughs> so quick because I've never been so passionate to leave the house so much. Right, <laughs> right. And now I'm just like I just can't wait. I'm like so passionate about like what I've written so far, and I'm like I want it so bad. So you said thirty pages. So is that like equivalent right. to like like 30 minutes? I think it is. Yeah, cuz typically it's a minute a page. Yeah, I, I thought That's the same thing call. about um Depending, Midnight Chaser. That was 26 yeah. pages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I thought it was supposed to be an 8 minute film, but clearly I was wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's once you start writing, man, I tell you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you can't stop. So emphasizing on the development of your your the like your process, do you mm-hmm. what do you do for like self care to kind of mm, self care in the sense for a creative? Like what do you think is the best method for someone to do? Mm, as a creative? As a creative. Um, it's really rough because like, you know, some days are obviously better than others. Um, I have, (laughs) I make it clear. I have a lot of anxiety, go through depression. So, you know, you need to focus on, you know, getting yourself better, 
however that is. And there's so many different ways to do it. And what works for one person might not work for another. So you have to see what works for you. But for me, especially as a creative, I want to put my focus towards, you know, like I said, writing and looking towards the future and not feeling, you know, stuck. Because I think a lot of us feel stuck right now. But if we have something like I'm writing something for the future and it, you know, it just gives you a little bit of hope and something to look forward to. Um, keeping my mind active has been the most important. Like I said, I've been exercising like <laughs> almost every day <laughs> and it up, really you a trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm coming back better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like for me i just need to keep my mind active no matter what it is i just love creating um obviously i can't do that as much right now but even like i am taking my own pictures oh uh, doing self-portraits and yeah and like i love editing. i'm doing self-portraits i love editing more than anything it's fun right but like, i love editing photos and I honestly, that takes my mind off of things. I'll sit there for an hour, like trying different stuff out. And like that, it's so stupid, but like, <laughs> it's something that like takes my mind off of things. Would you, would you find yourself actually shooting like yourself, like one of these days, like doing a photo um, shoot maybe? You know, I have a photography page on Instagram. Not many people know about. I, I know about it, but I, you know, that's a secret. You know how many models I know that have a secret photography account? I can't even say anything. It, it's so beautiful. No, it's not secret. It's just like my stuff isn't good, but like I'm all about the feelings that it brings. You know, I think <laughs> I'm shooting trees and shit. Like, <laughs> I just see something interesting and I take a picture of it, but I actually do want to start shooting people more. That's that's dope. And for those who know, we're talking about photography. Because <laughs> because I, I keep forgetting that like there's lingos, there's lingos that we use that people don't understand. They're like, wait, what what room is this? I just want to start shooting I just, people. I just want to start shooting people. <laughs> Things that photographers say. I'm a, I have so many TikTok videos just ready to go. <laughs> I don't have a TikTok. Not yet. <laughs> no, because I feel like it's for 12 year olds. Well, that's I'm pretty so much all you then. see on there is like middle schoolers or like freshman college. I just feel too old. Like, I'll feel like grandma. <laughs> oh, <there. laughs> God. <laughs> well, Facebook is for apparently older mothers. So, and then Instagram is for you know what? elderly people like Whatever us. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Let them oh my God. Do you feel like social media is going anywhere? Because I feel like it's taking a different route for creatives right now. Instagram related. Um, Instagram. I feel like Instagram's the way I make most of my money <laughs> because that's how, like it's all about network. As a freelancer, it's all about networking, and that's where I meet most of my people. Like model mayhem, like. That doesn't exist anymore. And like, that's how you used to get work. Um, so now I feel like people are just using Instagram to network with people. And um, yeah, so I'd say it's, it's more, it's moving more towards, you know, money making than anything. So much. So, all right. So for people in our position. Do you, do you think that plays a major factor on a person creating art like work opposed to like creating from the heart opposed to I'm, I'm creating for my audience like is there do you feel like it, it <laughs> plays a major factor in what the content we currently see <laughs> um right and it's very clear what is going to get you more life and I don't you know whatever works for you um we all know what gets more likes like obviously the more skin you show, the more likes you're going to get, the higher follower count you're going to get. Um, not my, you know, favorite thing to do. <laughs> um, I, you know, I like, you know, I like a wide range of stuff, you know, but, you know, 
people will ask me like what gets the most engagement and it's like oh if you wear a bikini like and it, it's just like a selfie that's going to get way more likes than like something you put so much work into and like that's a little upsetting so because how do you yeah. how do you even fight that though like like do you feel like there has you to be a can. moment where you have to put your foot down or you like nah this is a battle that's not gonna be won <laughs> Um, I mean, that's just how it is. <laughs> I just feel like it, nothing's going to change for that content to get more likes and stuff. But it doesn't mean that that's the direction that you have to go in. Because from I've kind of been stuck at my like count. I mean, my follower count for a while. And I'm just like, I'm over it. Like whenever I, whatever. Give this girl yeah, 600 followers people. today. <laughs> I'm not going to post, you know, something just to get me more followers. I'll post something if I like it. And it is what it is. So do, at this point, do you feel like maybe you'll take a transition and post like short films or acting stuff on your account? Or is it just going to be maybe uh, just stay a modeling or you may just transition into mm -hmm. going into just posting acting? Right. Yeah. You know, my first love is it's acting and filmmaking right now. And, um, you know, I was just talking to my sister about it. Like, I was posting stuff for infliction on my page. And I'm like, it's getting no likes compared to just like a regular photo. And I'm like, but like, this is what I'm most passionate about. And I was like, so upset. I'm like, nobody's liking this. Nobody's like, well, I'll post cl like clips of inflection. I'm like, nobody's even like looking at it. <laughs> and like, that is like what I'm most proud of that I'm doing right now. And it was, it gets no likes and attention, but you know what? Like, even if like three people see that clip and then go watch the film, like then that's three more people than, you know, who would have watched it. Exactly. I don't know what happened with your voice on here. I think it's Instagram, you know, trying to mess us all up, but you sounded like you Vader. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It does sound cool. <laughs> like you'll hear it when I, because I'm recording this. You're you're the first podcast. Wait, do I do I still? Uh, yeah, a little. That's what. Oh, you changed it. No. Oh. <laughs> Am I back to normal? No. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> as crazy. It's it's not as bad, but like okay. it's like your voice, but the undertone. It's like Vader. Right. Every, everyone, right? Do I sound like Vader to you? <laughs> that I need to change something? <laughs> let us know. <laughs> yeah, let us know. I mean, I don't Alex know. sounds like <laughs> Vader. Or if I sound like <laughs> Vader. <laughs> let us know. Wait, oh, she. See, I wasn't. I can't make this up. <laughs> Melissa <Wait>. said yes. <laughs> What's <laughs> the city? Like you keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> Do I sound like? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Melissa's the only funny. See, see? Melissa's the only one who's it. I sound like baby. Somebody else said like a phasma a little. I never heard phasma, phasma. in my life, but what? Yes. That's from Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> I'm very disappointed in you. How? Listen, now I gotta go. Listen, After I gotta Phasma, Google. You need to like brush up on your <laughs> Put some respect on George Lucas's name. <laughs> How dare you? Phasma. Oh yeah, Phasma. Got it. The the no, new one. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I can't make this up. That's what it sounded like. So I don't know, maybe if there was like um uh what you call it? Like a <laughs> filter. <laughs> Listen, I'm a big Star Wars know. fan. I don't know what to say. No, forget it. Let, let's keep it rocking. You know, it, let's keep it rocking with the Vader time. Like, it's just no. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god but so do you so all right um any movies that you're watching right now that might be inspiring you your current work that you're writing on like anything like because i'm watching ozark right now and i'm right now midnight changer ch- uh, chasers changing right now um with what i'm currently right i'm i have a horrible attention span so i watch more clips of films <clears throat> i'm trying to watch more like period pieces like i'll watch clips of films you know, during, since I'm writing something that's based in the 30s, I'm watching films, like, during that time. I'm really, more than that, though, I'm watching, like, documentaries on the subject that I'm writing on, because, like, I just, I want to make sure I get things right. Okay. Even though it's a fictional story within that time, I just don't want to be completely off, so I'm really watching more documentaries than, and reading more, like, research studies and stuff like that okay <laughs> so you're taking you don't a... want to know what i'm watching right now i'm watching <laughs> i hope <laughs> it's not was it... 90 day fiance. <laughs> oh god there's another one you probably watched it it was the uh don't something with cats something uh, cats it was a i don't know but i you I heard about that cats, one maybe. i made melissa watch cats you've watched cats yeah no i heard it was horrible it it is, but it's something that you have to see with it. He's like, "Oh no, it's horrible!" But you gotta watch you it. Can't, yeah, you can't um, not watch it. That is. Melissa wanted to kill me that I made her watch it. That I'm, you know what? Just just because you said it, I'm gonna watch it. But the the and the CGI was just horrible for me. Honestly, I felt like I should just. No, I don't even know where to begin with. <laughs> Melissa was like, if we can make a better movie, this is no <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, Melissa's a real one. Wait, I can't hear you. Hold on. Uh, hello? No? You're whispering. Hold on. All right, can you hear me? Let hello? us know in the comments. Can you hear Phil now? <laughs> hello? No? Hello? Hello? No, you're good. Oh, okay, you're good. I think it's because somebody called me. That's why. But uh, what was I gonna say? Look, they need to leave. Leave it. You know what? Leave us alone. Right. <laughs> We're busy. Now everybody wants the attention. Uh, the so the short <laughs> film is called "Don't F with Cats." I have not heard of that. Yeah. But it sounds interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much <laughs> about um. It's not, you know, whoever didn't, I'm not going to spoil it, but essentially it's about a, a killer. So he starts off with, with like cats, like animals and then cats. And he's recording this. He's documenting this. And then eventually he moves on to people. But when you watch it, you don't, you don't know he's, it's going to people. And you just watching like, all right, this guy, I don't know why I'm watching it, but this guy's like killing animals and whatnot. And then next thing you know, that that's, that's I can't typical, watch that. I didn't watch it. It was just, someone was telling me about it. I'm like, I, my cousin's like, oh, you should watch this. And then my other friend's like, oh, you gotta watch this. And I'm like, I know what exactly, like y'all don't know, but that's how they start. They start killing off animals and then they move their way up high. And that's like a psychopath. Mm-hmm. Like, beginning, mm-hmm. and that's what y'all watch. Y'all yeah. might be new to y'all. Yeah, but... a lot of time. <laughs> I can't watch that. I thought you were going to tell me, like, the cats take revenge. <laughs> then I was on board. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a whole other movie. <laughs> Why don't we make a film like that? <laughs> that's a good question. How Once once they lift this, um, this that's whole next thing, summer. you know it would be even crazier? We got to find a project. What can we do to film a short without ever having to be next to each other? Like, like quarantine style? Quarantine style. <laughs> like, how did they make a film if they never were together? Like, how? It doesn't make any sense. How can you direct something if you're not there? All right. We got a thing. That's, that's a project. That's a project. That's a project. That's a. It's yeah. like um, cause I'm trying to do some shorts, cause I'm dropping, I'm dropping a little bit of the gems. Um, I'm I'm working on a project 
like it's it's based on genres so it's it's, it's like a mm-hmm. short but it's different genres and yeah. it's kind of like self me self filming so i have to do like all like whether it's horror action apparently is not an actual genre which is crazy action is, is an element of something like like you could like i was i'll tell you right now which was nuts to me when i when i was looking up like the the main the main genre thrillers are not you know when i was um deciding what you know from the list on amazon what to list infliction like there's no psychological thriller yeah, it's so lame. Like my movie, no, your movie is an action su- suspense, which I saw. <laughs> right, that's what I ended up going at. <laughs> like, okay. Yes, yeah, so, and so the genres is crime, fantasy, romance, science fiction, western, inspirational, historical fiction, and horror. Uh, action is only something that you would typically want. You could add, but it's not like um, mm. its own genre, like action. So I'm gonna be doing. I'll add a little bit of that, but I have some scenes that I'm trying to do by myself, but I don't think it's a thing. Like, like I want to do an interrogation room, but it's like, <laughs> you know me. Like, what do you want to eat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to eat? We need to do another one. We need to do more of those. Yeah, we definitely do. Like, and- we need to create like, a whole YouTube channel. They do animated shorts for story blogs, sometimes on podcasts, maybe. An idea. Infli- <laughs> Listen, I will push Infliction to the max. I would love to see that as an animated animated version. <laughs> animated version. Like, what, what style would you want to be if you were, yeah. like... Would it be, like, a Disney style? Yeah. Or would it be, like, an, anim- like an anime style? Or like, what would what would be your ideal style? Oh, I don't know. I thought of that. <laughs> or would it be like a Marvel or a DC? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just Nora, just in the gym, just flexing, and then she. <laughs> Just hit hitting the bag and whatnot, and it just breaks <laughs> off the chain. <laughs> holding those planks, <laughs> holding those planks, whatnot. Eating pizza afterwards. No one knows about that. <laughs> <laughs> pizza. Yeah, let's go get some pizza. That didn't say in the film, did it? No, I think I think you. I think, I think you said that, nah. Take that, that out. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, that's a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> See bonus scenes. Oh my like, god, Nora's... Nora! Black Widow badass action figure. <laughs> the turtleneck. Oh my god, they have to have the turtleneck neck attachment. <laughs> like that has to be one of the. <laughs> Look, I'm we're going... making a statement. The sadists wear their gloves. We, so we we started this. We started it. Just no one else was wearing gloves more than we. No. Were. And we, we were ahead of our we were ahead of our time. <laughs> oh my god! I really want an action figurine though. Like, <laughs> like that would be so dope. I know to have an action figure of yourself. <laughs> that just changes everything. Like we have to go to like, New York everything. to get that like made. I believe. To get like a 3D like version. <laughs> that's next level. That's that's the next level. I I yeah. definitely buy it and then have Claire like right next to it. Like that's the alternate universe. Completely <laughs> different version. They like, went from from like uh artist where that plays music and earthy to an assassin. Like I don't the, <laughs> like what is going on? Yeah. Here? You have different you have different versions of the character. Like what what Nora do you want? What Claire do you want? <laughs> All right. Oh my See? god. We we dropping See gems. The plans that we have. <laughs> Wait, like the gloves, hand in the bed grab scene. I know that's your favorite. <laughs> First of all, that's <laughs> plot twist. I have I have a surprise for y'all. What's his favorite, what's his favorite scene? Who is that? Like the gloves. That's my friend Joe. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
Little does he know. <laughs> Whose hand was Whose that? Whose hand is that? <laughs> Take a guess. Take a good guess. That was the funniest thing ever because people were like, like what they- no, okay, can we talk about how we shot that scene? <laughs> The, 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 the chain the reaction. Oh yeah. The chain reaction. Oh yeah. Because so, we had so someone was shooting it. Was it Keytalk was shooting? Yeah, he was it? shooting it, and I had to be like okay. on the other side. But he had to tap Melissa. Then Melissa had to tap you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And every, <laughs> everybody was lying on the floor around the bed let you know when the right time was to do that <laughs> so that you know what's even crazier about that you didn't know it was coming because no I was it was a chain reaction <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was on the floor around the bed just tapping Tap. each other when it was time <laughs> i was like oh now it's time and then i was just like it was just so weird like being a hand model and then it's just like, all right how do i but it looked crazy. Look, they film, don't though. know People how are... many times you made an appearance. See, all right, everyone go watch the film again <laughs> and look for your appearances. Look for Tabitha. Oh yeah, Tabitha. <laughs> that's that's she's the she's she's the number one. <laughs> she hit the store with a new guy every week. <laughs> that was crazy. I'm like, how did she with the director, the director, the cinematographer? <laughs> Like, buy me this. Buy me like, this. I really want to know what 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 actually Olivia really did for work. Like, was she like an undercover we agent? We don't know. She was. I feel like she's rich because <laughs> all she does is go for her morning jog. Yeah, she has so much time. Like, what do you? What and else she's do you just do? Living a carefree life. <laughs> you know what? What if we did a parody right? on Infliction? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we're that's happening. That that has to happen. Now we can really full fledged comedy and just like like stuff that we like. Wait a minute, if you're always running, then how did they catch you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're doing it. Hey, I ha- listen, that would probably be the best marketing because I had to do it. Wait until because Midnight Chase, I'm still promoting that and whatnot. But like when I do like the full version, because I had because I didn't have too much content to work with. But like I'm reading these comments. Outfliction. <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounds like a Netflix special. <laughs> <laughs> Oh it just God. becomes a comedy. That is hilarious. <laughs> no, but you have to do funny stuff just to get people like just to promote your film. Like I was supposed to do right. a lot of stuff for Midnight Chaser in terms of get people like like uh, <clears throat> cool commercial stuff. I didn't do it because I had too much content. But now I'm like, all right, I got something. When I when we start doing the the actual, you'll you'll see. All, all, right. all I've been doing has been on YouTube. <laughs> Like how do you how do you make a like it's mostly gonna be practical, like all the, all the scenes and all the stuff like there's gonna be some stuff. Just, yeah, yeah. So I've been looking up corn, you know, the color dye and the corn syrup <laughs> for you filmmakers out there. That's how you do it. <laughs> when I spit all over everyone. <laughs> I, I thought I was safe. I I, I was I was like. <laughs> I felt like uh, most of that time, like, she's never going to get me. <laughs> I'm going to save this. No, this. nobody was safe. <laughs> nobody was no safe. No one was safe. I think the worst one that got no. was definitely Key Talk with that one. Because we, we had a plexiglass. <laughs> we had yeah. a solid. And, and then, then you like, oh, plexiglass? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure there's still remnants of it at the art factory. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We yeah. definitely left a mark there. We, we left our mark. <laughs> yeah, like the like the police scene. Like that's one of my favorite scenes, like lighting up and doing like like work for there. Because Look, like we we killed it on that scene. Out of all the things we did, that one really sold it. Cause how did you get yeah, an office I'm, building? <laughs> I'm especially proud of that scene. Right? <laughs> Just because we made what was like just a box into a detective office. 
that was a box like I, if i didn't know I, I was really looking at it i'm like how are we gonna make this work and then we figured it out we put the lights where we need to put uh, you know one at the top made it like look like it was like this fluorescent light in the office put some random maps and whatnot had the, the maps Melissa got the maps the, yeah, exactly the, I love the sun the sunlight coming the, through the, the sun, look we're that. just praising ourselves we're just sitting here praising ourselves because <laughs> we killed we it. Said so convenient. no because like nobody knows nobody what we knows went the work in that one because especially on, the, on an indie the group, hospital and the hospital we put a we had IVs <laughs> that was connected to no one. <laughs> we we put what was that on top of it? The bed was a table. All right. Yeah, well, no, yeah, it was a table and some old ass a mattress and on the pillows. Table. Yeah, that was a mattress. On- <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I, my allergies were so bad. I don't know how I survived that. That was a true infliction. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like we had to fight was, people then, filming there, doing like music oh, videos. The, the fight, the fights just to get bagels cut. Like <laughs> feeding the co- tell, can you tell everybody how do you feed your crew? And like because not can everybody we talk does that. About this? <laughs> Let's talk. Can about we this. talk about this? Yes. Yeah, I know not everybody does it, <laughs> and when I'm not fed on set. I'm not happy. <laughs> Guys, right? I understand it's very expensive to make films. Number one, feed your cast and crew, or they're not going to be happy campers. <laughs> feed your cast and crew. Always make sure there's food. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I mean, I, that's that's the main thing. I never forget because you not that you spoiled me, but I definitely felt spoiled because you definitely fed me. But I went to another project <laughs> and we spent like six hours or, or, or so. I forgot what it was. And it, and it was a lot of work. And then when it came to the end, it was just like, all right, see y'all later. I thought we were gonna get some food to eat. Like this, we spent all these hours, nothing, n- nothing, no right? foundation, at nothing. Least ta- at least tell us there's not going to be food, so we bring food. Exactly. I'm like, because I'll be going there, like mm, I'm gonna get meals, <laughs> and then you're, I'm like, I get hung, really hungry, then I get really like nasty. <laughs> We we've all seen everybody go through a transition. Oh, we've seen like <laughs> every side of everyone. <laughs> How about the day I stormed off crying? I do remember that. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and you like, guys couldn't find me. <laughs> yes, hangry. I get very hangry. You, get, you got hangry. We we lost you in New yeah. York, which was always fun. <laughs> Wait. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah, the train closed and the crew left. (laughs) We're like, she's on the train. We gotta get her. I forgot about that. And I ended up in a Walgreens in Brooklyn crying. I remember that. Because I know Melissa's like, and I don't know how I because all you guys were together and we're like, okay, it's gonna close, but like we'll meet you at the next stop. I somehow ended up in Brooklyn at a Walgreens. <laughs> we went and it was I was crazy because we, we, <laughs> we went to find you, and then they're like, "All right, the next stop, she'll be there." She she's not here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but it, I felt it was late at night, and I was in a Walgreens. I feel like that was the I safest place. <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah, it was, you know, that was that was that was that was infliction one. I was like, oh, this is the taste of filmmaking at its finest. Yeah. <laughs> then oh my gosh, remember being on the on the bus in um Queens and the playing the music and there was a fight on the bus. Oh wait, I think there was. Wait, yeah, that was Queens. Someone right? was playing real yeah, really loud music, and we experience a full blown fight. You're like, you gotta get off the bus. Like, I ain't getting off the yeah. bus. And like, oh my god, only in New York. <laughs> and we went that day 
to film. I think it's like a 10 second scene. Was that the time that Where I, we I just got my camera in New York? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. Oh man, we're about to get cut off in twenty seconds. All right, everybody, follow oh, Alex on on in, on Instagram, Bohemian Songtress. Uh, we'll definitely be back. And click the link in my bio and watch our film. We worked so hard on it. Yes, watch and be nice to us. <laughs> watch and play.